it is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool, and I am so excited that you are here joining me for this whole video. And then guess what? It's all about a, a clothing theme. So tell me in the comments, do you do a clothing theme in your classroom? If you do do a clothing, clothing theme, when do you do one? Do you do it like with community helpers? Do you do it in the winter? When do you do it? So tell me um, that in the comments. But before I forget where all the links are, there is links to um, a fun freebie. So you can go grab that after we're done. And there's links to all the printables and my Amazon storefront and my TPT store. I links to all the things are up there. So if you need any of that, um, go grab it. Yeah, make sure you grab that freebie um, after we're done. Yeah, we're doing a Facebook Live all about a clothing theme. So on the blog, there's a whole blog post all about a clothing theme along with a book list. But you know, for every theme I do, I always do a Play-Doh tray. Always. I mean, you kind of have to, right? This one's really fun. Um, you can make your own Play-Doh. You can always just use these little cups. Do you do you um, and then I throw in just your normal little play-doh tools these are actually like little kitchen tools from the Dollar Tree and this mini um, a mini little rolling pin I have these little felt shirts and pants these are actually from like a Lakeshore all about me set um, but I love using these for the clothing theme because one, they're already cut out. Um, and the, the Play-Doh, as long as it's not a sticky Play-Doh, it doesn't really stick to it that much. And then just some cut up ribbon, some um, shape buttons, and then I have some t-shirt cookie cutters. And then these are actually from like a, um, a sports cookie cutter set I have, but it's like a hat and a shoe. So perfect for the clothing theme. And then my favorite thing are these little people because let me show you. Play-Doh's a little bit. <laughs> okay so if you have these little people figures now you can also use like dollhouse figures if you have them whoops um they're just like those little like me counters what they can do is they can take the play-doh and they can kind of like mold it on the people and they, this is probably what will happen. They can make like a dress or a skirt or a hat or a scarf or gloves or mittens. They can kind of make whatever little clothing they want to on, on the little people. And look, you guys, it comes right off. Now, if it's for some reason your Play-Doh gets sticky, <laughs> soak these in some water and keep going about your day and it'll just um, come right off later. But yeah, so grab your little counters and then some dough and they can make little clothes for people like little miniature 3D sculptures. And Play-Doh trays are great for problem solving, social skills, language, um, and lots and lots of fine motor because they are using all these fine motor muscles to mold and sculpt and pinch and squeeze and roll and flatten and all the things with the dough. And a lot of times they're using their upper, um, their upper arms and shoulders too as they're pressing and rolling and things like that. So Play-Doh trays, are always um, a must in my classroom and students love them they always they are one of the things that gets played with the most in my classroom I have a whole blog post all about play-doh trays for the whole year like a bazillion of them so if you want to know more about play-doh trays you can go check that out um, and this is just like a chip and dip tray this one's from Lakeshore but um, the Dollar Tree has them too so there is your play-doh tray and then books so it really is going to depend on when you're doing your clothing theme, like what kind of books you're gonna read. This is one of my favorite books of all time, like a pair of socks. I have loved this book for forever. The words and are super simple and the um, illustrations are vibrant and they're just, the language is great, um, but it just has great, like this one says, not the same, I can see. And they're basically like sorting the laundry and like this one's slimy. It's just really great describing words um, and talks about like matching. And it's just a super simple book about sorting and kids always love, love this book. So that's a good one. And again, I have the, all these books in um, the clothing book list on my blog. If you want to, um, any like direct links to them. Peep the Cat and his four groovy buttons, a must, right? This one is a wordless book. It's called A Piece of String 
you can tell I got it like used on Amazon, but it works. But it's just, it's like photographs and it's just all the different ways you can use a piece of string. Now, I love using wordless books in my classroom because especially like during the beginning of the year, the kids are always like, I can't read a book. And I'm gonna say, you can, and you can just look at the pictures and you can make up your own story in your head. And you can make up whatever you want the um, book to be about and you can read the pictures, which is different than reading the words, but it is so powerful for students to start to really notice all the details and illustrations. Um, and you can even model this by having them make up um, a sentence for each page or a couple sentences and putting a little post-it note and they can make up the words and then you can put it back on the classroom library. Um, but it's just super simple photographs of how um, all these different ways to use a string, kind of like not a box, but with string. So it's really, really cool. Um, so that one, and it's called One Piece of String. All right, and then this one, One Shoe, Two Shoe, it's a counting book. One shoe, two shoe, red shoe, blue shoe. Um, and it's a rhyming book. It's great. Um, <laughs> it's all about shoes. I got this one used off Amazon too. Um, this one's great. And then if you're reading, if you're doing your clothing theme in the winter, all of the, um, the winter um, books about clothing, like the hat, the mitten, and there's a ton more um, like wintry clothing books. And then maybe you're gonna do it during Community Helpers. Who's hat is this, there's also like whose tool is this, and there's another set that goes with clothing for all the different community helpers. And maybe you're just gonna read some really fun books. This one is really, really fun. It says Pirate Jack Gets Dressed, and it's a rhyming book, um, and like he uses words like silver and gold. I need a hand getting dressed, me silver hook, you might have guessed. And he just goes through and he, gets dressed with all each color. He puts something new on and it's great because it has, again, a lot of really great color words and it's a rhyming book, which we love, um, but it's a really fun book. Pirate Jack gets dressed. So add this one to um, your book list. So yeah, but again, read um, whatever books you want. Again, it's, a lot of the books are gonna depend on what season you're reading or you're doing your clothing theme in. Um, but oh, again, all of those are on um, listed on my blog. So let me show you um, the fun freebie. So it is, these are some geoboard mats. So it has the different geoboards and it has the um, icon in the bottom and they can use a dry erase marker and make or trace the word. So we're sneaking in a little bit of writing and some fine motor in there, but these are free on my blog. So make sure you go grab those. And basically all you need are some geo boards. These, I just use the little ones from, um, I think they're from learning resources. And I typically use those like loom bands to make the, or for a student to um, use as rubber bands because they're little and they're colorful and they're, really cheap um you can usually get them at walmart too like a little bag for like a couple bucks but they are perfect for woo, these little um these little geo boards so so fun and look at all this great fine motor they will be doing and problem solving now i will say if you have three-year-olds geo boards are going to be a little bit frustrating for your kiddos but i typically get these out with my three-year-olds um in the spring um, or towards the end of the year and then then they can handle it um, and then they're not so frustrating because they have more hand-eye coordination and their fine motor is um, a lot stronger so yeah so make sure you go grab those because it's again great fine motor lots and lots of math with spatial reasoning and then if you add a dry erase marker they will sneak in um, you can sneak in some writing as well now I can't forget about gross motor. So I actually just bought this set of scarves off of Amazon. Um, if you go on YouTube, um, okay, I'm old school and I have a CD that was just, we just use scarves. It was like a scarf CD. Um, we use from music and movement time. Now, if you don't have the scarf CD, you can literally play any song and you can just give students different directions and you can have them move the scarves different way. You can have them move like to the tempo, so you can say move them fast, move them slow, move them side to side, make it bumpy, make it go, like you can also, um, we would do that for one song and then another song, the next song that would play, 
we, I would just say, okay, we're just gonna, you can make your scarf in a ball and you can throw it up and watch it and then catch it. Or if you have littles, have them throw it up and then that way they can catch it. So we can start to gr start to practice that, the, um, the grabbing or the catching. Um, this is great for kindergarten classrooms too. Um, and if you don't have a set of scarves, like I said, I just bought these. I literally had um, a set of scarves or um, my set of scarves in my um, classroom because again, like I got, I just got these. Um, I took some of my old scarves that I had and I chopped them up, which is with some scissors and my the students love those just as much. But these are gorgeous and they're so much cheaper now on Amazon, I feel like. Um, but yeah, so for the first song, move to the tempo, fast, slow, um, bumpy. Um, they have them make waves and then have them, you can have them catch and throw for the next song. And it, I don't usually on that one, I usually don't tell them like when to throw, like literally the song plays and they're just throwing and catching and throwing and catching for the whole song, like three minutes. And I know you think that's really boring. My kids are going to get bored really fast. No, they're not because they're getting to throw something <laughs> and they get to throw something that won't hurt anyone, um, won't hurt your classroom and Great for indoor recess as well, too. And especially in the winter, if they can't go outside or maybe it's really, really hot in the summer, this is great for the summer, too. Um, and then for the last song, and I'm sure there's like an actual like little rhyme that goes with it, but you can do opposites. So you can practice opposites. So you can say, okay, hold it up high and then shake it and say, what, what is the opposite of high? And then they say down low. They can shake it down low and then shake it in the front of you. What's the opposite front? Your back. Then shake it in the back. Shake it under your leg. Shake it above your head. Um, like all the different opposites. So use scarves for music and movement time. It's really, really fun. And you can sneak in a ton and ton of learning. And don't forget, gross motor is really, really important because we need strong big muscles in order to have strong little muscles. Okay. So speaking of little muscles, let me talk about some manipulatives that I love to use for a clothing theme. Clothespins, obviously, right? Um, now, you can also make a set of letter clothespins. The, this has um, uppercase on one side, lowercase on the other. Those are ends. And then I also always have a set of numbers. Three. So we, you can use clothespins. Now, there's a ton of games you can do with this. Now, if you have, like, name cards, this can literally be a table time activity. Put out the name cards, and then students can just clip the name cards and make the word. Now, we know we love, they love names because why? Because they're all about them. And you can also have like a ton of, you can make like multiple letters. So um, that way, like you have like multiple A clothespin clips um, because they're, you know, you can go to the Dollar Tree and get some, um, but these are great. And then if you don't want to do names, maybe they're really good at names. You can do sight words. You can also do vocabulary words with these. Build whatever word you want. They can build words with these, really fun. And then, and any games too, which I'll show you in a minute, some, ga some games I like to use. Now my favorite manipulative would have to be buttons. So I have a couple different collections of buttons. I have these, which I think are just like some, like from like the craft sections at like Walmart. They're like small, medium, and large, just really pretty different colors. And then I have shape buttons. This is, um, I have this basket of shape buttons and then, cause it has different sizes. So this is like a large set in a small set. And then I do have another basket that's just all of the like smaller shape buttons. So use those. And then these are really fun. They're little mini shoes. Now they're kind of expensive. Well, I think they're kind of expensive. Um, I didn't realize this was all you would get because clearly I didn't read the directions when I bought them on Amazon. But if you want little shoes for any little games, they have these um, on Amazon, but this was the whole set that I bought them in. So Make sure you read the description <laughs> if you're buying them. Okay, so those are some manipulatives. So let's go to art. We'll start with art. So an art, a fun art activity you can do is just cut up a bunch of string. Um, literally, I have like a baggie of this like in the closet all the time for collage. And then if you are practicing using glue bottles, put out some glue bottles, a little bucket of buttons. If you have them, if not, that's okay too. Um, but if you put this really, really full, they will only stick buttons on there. But if there's only a little bit, obviously they won't um, be using them up as much. So they literally 
You can have them practice opening and they can squirt it. And if there's puddles of glue, it's fine. Um, and then they can stick the, um, the string in it. Now, if you don't want to use the bottles of glue, take a container like this, um, dump some of this, like um, the liquid glue out. And then I usually use paintbrushes so they can paint the glue on and then push this in. And I like to use cardstock anytime we're doing collage. So that way it kind of holds up a little bit better um, or like a thicker art paper. So do a string and button collage. It'd be really fun for art. Okay. Another fun, where's it at? Fine motor activity you can do are, are these like lacing mats. So these, like this mat, there's those like cross stitch mats. So I took one of these and you can tell I just cut it in half. So they're super easy to cut. It's just like super simple, like plastic. I think I did, I did cross stitching when I was like little, but I think it's just that like cross stitching mesh. Or like netting because this piece would be too big for a kiddo to manipulate it might be frustrating for them so I just cut it in half and then you don't have to buy as many and then you put out pipe cleaners buttons and if you have any like laces that have like the plastic coating on the end from any of like lacing sets that you have put those out and then what students can do is they can poke, we'll use a different color so you can see it. They can poke the pipe cleaner through and you can tell them how, uh-oh, if you, they'll have to pull it all the way through and it'll come out and say, oh, if you want it to stop, you will have to bend it over or kind of like make a little smush, smush knot on the end so it'll catch, which is great problem solving and again, lots of great hand-eye coordination. They're gonna like go kind of crazy with it, probably go around on the sides, but it's fine. And then they can unlace it when they're done. Cause I, this is this is like typically a project I wouldn't let them keep. Um, but again, they can you can put out both because the pipe cleaners would be easier to lace than the um, the string. But again, if you put out string, make sure it has the um, like that kind of that plastic on the end, so it's not frustrating. And you can throw some buttons out there, and it can just lace until their heart is happy. So that is a really fun lacing activity you can do. Now, I know sometimes at the Dollar Tree, they have those like metal, um, like a wreath, like Valentine's Day, they have like a heart. Sometimes they have like different, like, um, I think in the winter they have like a snowman or like St. Patrick's Day, they'll have like a little clover. You can also um, take long fabric strips and they can, or like, um, like pipe cleaners and they can weave um, on those too. So that might be easier to find than, this, I just grabbed some of this at Michael's. Okay. All right, another fun fine motor activity you can do is this kind of like wrap activity. Now, an activity like this, if they do a ton, I, if they wanna take it home, they can. But typically, I would like literally unwrap it after the kiddos were done with it. And then that way the next kiddo can do it. So I just cut out of cardboard some little shirts and pants and a shoe and a dress and what they suit. And then I have a whole bunch of cut string. So they have to find the end. And then they're literally just gonna like wrap it around. Like nothing, nothing crazy, nothing fancy. Just wrap all around because this is great hand-eye coordination. It's great problem solving because like it'll slip and they'll have to figure out how to manipulate and move the string in order for it to catch um, and for it to not like slip off. Um, and they can make it go different ways. And as they're moving in different ways, you see how my wrists are moving, which is great for, again, for all that great hand-eye coordination for both sides of the body working together, crossing the midline. Um, and again, they don't always have to take everything home. Tell them that they can unwrap it when they're done. And then that way it's ready for the next person. Um, so yeah. But if a kiddo worked on one for a really long time and they wanted to take it home, that would be fine with me. So make some little shirts, hats, clothing items out of cardboard from your Amazon boxes that I know you get. And um, you got a little wrapping, like weaving activity. 
So in my clothing math and literacy centers, I do have two cutting crafts. So one, and I put two in there. Normally there's only one, but I put two in there. That way it would depend on what season you're doing your theme during. So if you're doing it in the winter, there are these little boots I have. And then you can just give them strips of paper and cotton balls to glue on and they cut, cut, cut. And then here's the principle it comes with. And you can cut this out or you can have your students cut it out. It depends on what age group your students are. If they are able to cut it out, then have them do it. If that would be frustrating for them and they are really just working on cutting and snipping, you cut it out and then they can um, finish. But it's a cute little little snow boot or you could also even do rain boots in the, um, in the spring. Um, but it's not art. That is a, this is um, more of a cutting activity. Now, if it's summer and you're doing your clothing theme in the summer, or maybe you live on the beach, you could, there's also a, um, a flip flop. This one's stuck. There's also a little flip flop principle so they can make little flip flops. Just put out some cut up paper. And again, you, you can cut the flip flops out or they can depending on their, um, ability level and have a ton of fun. Now, if you want students to cut these out and they are getting frustrated, don't forget to um, have loop scissors out, which loop scissors bounce back open. So that way, if cutting is hard for them, they can use these and that'll give them a little bit of support. Also, if they're cutting, cutting, cutting and their hand is tired, give them the bounce. We call these bouncy scissors and they can use these because they're easier um, and they can finish the activity without being super, super frustrated. So make sure you put some of these out um, to use. So a lot of times in the winter, which it's winter right now, um, you have to put on all of the things to go outside. So this is a basket that I keep by my door, or I did, I'm, I'm not teaching this year, but I, they're little extra hats. I've like bought them from the Dollar Tree. You can tell some of these are extras from my own kids. Um, and I just have a ton. Now I do have gloves in here. Okay, and this is clearly mine. But <laughs> um, I have a whole bunch. So what they do is they can grab a set. Now I do have mittens in here if, if um, the gloves are frustrating. But so if, if they're able to, they can put on mittens or we have um, gloves or mittens, whatever they want. And basically, literally put out mittens and gloves in the morning for arrival time or maybe the end of the day for like around dismissal time. And students can practice putting on their gloves and their mittens. And they're gonna think it's so silly because they're um, inside and they're putting all of these things on. They, you can even put some hats out there so they can practice putting on their hats and their mittens and then practice taking them off. If your kiddos like um, put the match in, I usually, I fold mine over as an adult, but I usually tell them to just stick it inside. So that way when they pull these out, I can, um, they have a match. So again, if they need a pair, they can just grab a pair when they go outside to recess. Um, I um, And then these are great because you can just like throw them in the wash um, at the end of the week, once a week. Everybody's sick, more than that. Um, so that way they all have a buddy. But again, it, this putting on mittens and gloves is hard work. It's totally worth it to get them outside. But <laughs> um, if your students are struggling with it, just like if their students are struggling with math, with literacy, with letters, you would practice it, right? And you would do a, um, an activity or a small group to support them. So help them by putting them out at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, and, um, and they can help each other too. Um, but practice because the more they practice, the more independent they'll be able to be. And we want them to be independent so that way they can do things for themselves, which also makes it easier on you as you're getting a bazillion children, 18, six, eight, whatever you have, however many you have um, out the door to go to recess, <laughs> which means you get more time on the playground, which is the best. Now, don't forget about these little boards. This one I just picked up from Amazon. Um, instead of puzzles, if you have these, you can also ask family, say, hey, um, we're doing our clothing theme. Does anybody have any of those puzzles 
that have all the different clothing snaps on them, ask to borrow them for this for the study and maybe you can get like two or three. Um, they These are at like the, um, what do you call it? The resale shops a lot or at like Goodwill. These are there a lot, but that way students can practice opening, closing, buttoning, um, just even pulling this Velcro. Um, practice all of the different class. It's great fine motor and again, they use clothing every day to get on and off. Um, so the more they can practice, the more independent they'll be, which is um, the ultimate goal, right? So grab some or ask families to um, to send you in some because they probably have some. And also um, I have in the past when I've asked for puzzles like this, I did have a family like to say, you know, my kiddo doesn't play with this anymore and they donated, donated it to the class um, so they can so you may get um, some goodies that way too. Obviously you're not guaranteed that, but. Um, okay, so if you have the, any of these like white baskets from like the Dollar Tree, they look just like a laundry basket. So get these out and grab some Barbie clothes. So I ordered, I um, ordered some Barbie clothes from Amazon. Um, I think this is like, I ordered two sets, um, but it's like dresses and pants and we have like a fur coat and we have some other pants, but basically here, and a little dress and all kinds of little, and a little shirt, um, little and some other shirts. So all kinds of different clothes. And what you can do is you can have your students put these out in the middle of the table and you can have your students sort them out. Maybe you're gonna have them sort by color. Maybe all of these are pink. And literally you can just like dump this out all over the table, right? And then these could be in the middle and they can sort them. Now, in my, um, my um, pack, there are sorting mats. So if you wanted to give each kiddo a sorting mat, small, medium, and large, this one's in there. I do have a color sorting mat. And there is one if you wanted to sort by warm weather clothes and cold weather clothes, you could do that as well. I and mean, then it does have the printable little clothes in there. So if you don't have the Barbie clothes, um, you can use these and sort, but it's a great way to sort. Again, you can sort by color, by size, by season, um, especially if it's like cold and your students are wanting to wear shorts. <laughs> um, you can talk about how that's a, a warm weather clothes, which what is a cold weather clothes. Um, so that's really, really fun. And then you can also, where are they at? You can also get out cubes and they can measure how big or how long all the different items are. So they can measure how big shirt is or, you know, the pants or, or you know, the, the very furry coat or the shorts. I mean, there was a ton of different, there was even like a little hat in here all kinds of different stuff. And I just got like a cheap set off Amazon. Um, I can put the link in the bottom if you guys want. It also came with shoes, like a bunch of little shoes, which would be fun for like the sensory table or the just matching. Again, you can sort, sort just the shoes too. Who could even came with these big old boots? How fun is that? Um, here's the, so, oh, okay. hold on, there we go. So here's all the shoes. So they can literally match them. Um, they can sort them by color, they can measure them, whatever you wanna do, these little shoes. You can also put these on a sensory table, that would be really fun. Um, I didn't bring a sensory bin to show you guys tonight, but for typically, um, I would say, whatever your fa their student's favorite sensory filler is, whether it's rice or beans, put that in there, and then add a bunch of buttons. You could also add a bunch of like Barbie shoes and um, put little um, sorting like color cupcakes in there and they can sort by color. Um, all the little shoes and buttons, you could even throw um, some of these in there. Although if you did it, these are cloth, so um, they might get like colored on it a little bit, but you, you do what you wanna do. Uh, so yeah, no. So we measured, we sorted. What else can we do with these clothes since we bought them, right? <laughs> um, so grab your clothes bins. And they, and then you can grab some twine. And then if you have any like little stools or um, like a little milk crate, 
put those on the table and then tie each end to end. Like I have the little stools from Ikea, so you could put those on each end or um, figure out a way to like make your string, you can tie it end to end. And, or maybe you have a sensory table, you can do this and you can have, your students can hang the clothes on the clothesline. Now, maybe they're gonna match the colors. Maybe they're not gonna match the colors, but they can hang them on the clothesline. Or if you don't have a clothesline, oops, hold on. They can always just put them on the clothesline on the table. So I got a pink pair of pants and look, they're just gonna clip them on there and they can find a matching clothespin or not matching clothespin, whatever you wanna do. Um, and then you got clothes on the clothesline. So lots and lots of fun, fine motor there. Okay. Right, let me put all of these clothes away. Now, if you don't have Barbie clothes, totally fine. I got you. I have another idea. So, head to the Dollar Tree and grab some socks. So, I grabbed some socks. A couple of pairs of these in here are mine that um, I didn't wear, but they're like clean, obviously. Um, I wouldn't put dirty socks in here, but a lot of the socks at the dollar store was like the one I, like they come like two to a set, especially like the really little ones. So grab some socks that are different sizes. Okay, I did, these are my own little, little guy's um, socks from when he was a baby. So if you have kids and maybe you have some baby socks, you can grab those. Um, and they can match the socks like I'm doing right now, they can match them and then they can clip them. That way it's to show it's a match. They can also put them in order of size. So you can go small. These are about the same size, small, medium, large. I did buy these really long ones that are fun. So we have really long socks. And then I grabbed like some, I kind of grabbed some that are a little bit, um, that are kind of like, so that way our sizes will go up, 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 and it'll just get bigger, bigger, bigger. Um, so yeah, so just grab a whole bunch of socks from the Dollar Tree, or maybe you have some like laying around or a little, little baby one. Um, and they can clip and they can match. Now you can also measure the socks with cubes. So you can put out the clothes fins and put out the, um, the cubes and they can measure how big it is and see which one it is. Now, if you wanna add a writing component, maybe you want them to write numbers, grab some, um, I, I keep little um, little clipboards in my classroom. So grab the little clipboards and put a marker at each spot and then have all the socks and things in the middle and they can take a sock and they can measure it. Like this one is three and they can just write a three on their board and they can put some back. Now, if you know me, you know, I also like to use rainbow rulers in my class, which rainbow rulers are, um, a literally a wooden ruler that I colored each inch. So they're learning how to use the ruler. Now they're not like actually using the measurement like lines on here, but they can count the color blocks. So it's Basically the same as counting these color blocks. So they have to learn how to line it up at the bottom and then they can count. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven big. And then they would write it down, seven. And then they can measure something else. Now maybe you wanted, maybe they loved measuring and sorting all the socks. Um, maybe do it again, do it the one day and they can have it, have the cubes out and they can measure and count with the cubes. And then the next day, so you guys had so much fun doing this. Today, we're gonna, or, um, you know, this morning we are gonna measure with our rainbow rulers. So put a rainbow ruler at everybody's spot with a marker and your clipboard and they can measure and explore and have a ton of fun um, with all of these very, very silly socks. So do a ton of fun activities with socks, so fun. Now, I know some people also like to get out like soapy water and put socks and they can actually try and scrub them. Um, you can if you want to. Um, I don't know if the Barbie clothes would hold up or not. 
because I bought the really cheap Barbie clothes, knocked it over, but you could buy, um, but then again, if you bought nice Barbie clothes, I don't know if we would want to get it wet, um, but you could try it with like um, some like some like little kid shirts um, or like some cheap dollar store socks to kind of do like a washing machine, um, scrubby bubbles, um, little sensory tub. That would be fun too. So back to the clothespins. So like I said, I have a set of number clothespins and letter clothespins. So these are in my clothing math and literacy centers. Now there are two sets. So this one has some of the letter miss letters missing and this one has all of the letters on it, okay? So, so what students are gonna do is they will have the clips out and then they have to match it, A, B, C. And so they would put C because that's the letter that's missing. This one is A. And again, I have uppercase on one side, lowercase on the other, and they can match it. Now, if this is too tricky with the missing ones, it's totally fine to just put out the ones with um, all the letters on them, and then they can just match them. You could also put out, where's it at? A dry erase marker, and students can trace the letters, and then they can match it. So we're sneaking in some writing in there as well. And then these were so much fun. Um, I also made a set with numbers. So you can take your number clothespins and you can match those up as well. And again, I have some that have the numbers missing. So that way they have to count on and figure out which um, number it is or, oh, sorry. <laughs> some have the numbers and then I have some with um with all the numbers on there. So you pick which level is appropriate for your students. Maybe you're gonna do this in small groups and you're gonna do this with two different levels of kiddos. So you're gonna use one set one day and one set with the other or one set with one group and one set with the other group. So you can differentiate so everybody is learning and having fun. But again, these are just ones I made. Um I know Target Dollar Spot has them sometimes, but these are just as good. And then again, you can have put out some very race markers and they can write the numbers too. So fun. Now, if they love clothespins, which most kids do, they just love clipping. And also, I don't know about you, if you have the problem of the kiddos like pulling them apart, um, they I I have learned over the years how to put them back together. You just really you just have to like pull this part up and it slides right back in. Um so but if your kiddos are pulling them apart, just to have a conversation and be like, hey, if you pull all the clothespins apart, we won't have any to play with. And then typically it stops or at least slows down. So we are doing lots of letters with this. So we have little clothing letter sets and you can tell this is a really big stack. So if you have really little friends, maybe you're only gonna put out letters A, through H, and they are going to match the letters, right? And then we have the, where the little, so they have a hat, oops, with, so they have ant, there's car, and then, oh, that's not bird. <laughs> now, where's my string? So you can also put out a string with this if your students love, again, if they love clothespins, put out the clothespins and they can find the hat, the letter, and the lowercase letter and find a match and they can put it on the rope. Or you can just, again, if your students are younger and they are not working on sounds yet, that's okay. They can just match the uppercase and the lowercase and match it and put it on. Or maybe you want them to work on like, like putting the letters in order so then they can put the letters in order on the on the clothesline, just like real close, but with letters. And again, if you laminate these, you can have the students can trace the letters, but you pick what level you want to play this with. But there are a lot of pieces. So if you have younger students, only put out some of the letters. You don't always have to put out everything all the time, um, especially if it will, you know, it will frustrate your students. Don't do it. So. I have a number version of this as well because it was so, so much fun. So we have the shirt, the hat, and they're sticking together on me. 
pants. Here's the, here's another one. We have the shirt, the hat, and the pants. Like how fun is that? My shirt, hat, I have them in order. So that way <laughs> you guys can see them. But you could have them all mixed up. And again, do numbers one through five. Do numbers one through 10. You pick. And then they can find the match. And then they can put it on the clothesline. So what? So that's a really fun counting activity you can do. Or you can also have them work on doing number order with that as well. You pick what you want to do. So in the writing center, I have clothing words and we have lowercase and we have uppercase. You pick what level your students are ready for. And then I always put out half sheets of paper and I usually put it in the little, um, it's like a tiered little tray so they can see it. And I typically do the half sheet because if I do a full sheet, I feel like it's wasting paper because sometimes they just scribble a little bit and then they want a new piece. So that way I put just some, um, just a little half sheets out. And I have, we have like winter and then we have summer clothes and then we have laundry. And then I like putting dot markers out because clothes have spots. So put some dot markers in the writing center and then they will have a ton of fun. And you can also add some stickers, some dot stickers if you want to, because again, clothing is covered in stripes and um, spots. So add some of that to your writing center. Okay, this might be my favorite game. So we know we love Pete the Cat. So this game is kind of like a Pete the Cat game. So what students are gonna do is they're gonna grab a letter and then they're gonna find the match. But you pick what your students are working on. Are they gonna match the uppercase letter? Are they gonna match the sound? Or are they gonna match a lowercase letter? Where's, the, where's that? There it is. So you pick, but let's say you want them to match uppercase and lowercase. So they would find the pair of shoes that match with the chains. How, how awesome is that? So they're matching uppercase, uppercase. They can match uppercase, lowercase. They can match letter to sound. You pick, just put out some chains and just punch some holes in the corner and then they can match them. Now, if you don't want to do the chains, just they can just put match them in like a pocket chart. But the chains make it so much more fun. And again, we're sneaking in even more fine motor. So tons and tons of fun. So again, this game is in the clothing, math, and literacy center set, just like all the other ones I've showed you are in that, that unit. All right, I have one more literacy activity to show you. And then um, math. So... We all like to have our go to the we have our clothes washed in the washing machine. So these are little washing machine. It's like a washing machine syllable sort. So what they are gonna do is they are gonna sort the clothes, and I have them all crinkled up just like it is in the laundry. And why would I crinkle them up? Because they have to open them up with their fingers. Asparagus, asparagus. Put it in. Cheese, cheese, I can put it in. Pizza, too, and they can put it in. And they're literally just like standing up like that, which makes it super easy for you guys to prep. Um, but I just printed this off on regular paper and that way they can crumble it back up for their next friend because who doesn't love making things in a big ball? Now, you could also do the syllable sort with the Barbie clothes that you have, um, but a lot of the clothing is like not that many syllables. So like coat, pant, shirt, a lot of it is one syllable. So maybe you could do the color word or something like that. But this one again is really, really fun. And who doesn't love smashing everything? Oh, also I forgot to say, so in dramatic play, I don't have a laundromat set, like dramatic play set yet. But if you want me to make a laundromat dramatic play set, will you let me know in the comments? Because if a lot of people want it, um, I can add it to my to-do list because I'm almost done. I think I have one more month and then all of the center units will be updated. It only took me two years to update all of them. So then I can start making some more um, dramatic play packs and kind of work on some other units for you guys as well. So if you want a laundromat 
um, dramatic light, let me know. If not, what you can do is you can add a washer and dryer to your dramatic plate. Now I know you're thinking that's nuts, but all you need, to need is a box and then you can cut a like circle hole. If you wanna be really fancy, you can tape a circle basket in there and they can put the clothes in, they can take them out and they can fold them. Just makes on your shelf a little spot so they can practice putting, in, um, putting the clothes away, folding them um, and kind of sorting them out. So super, super fun. So, okay. Now we are on to math. And I know you see these behind me. Hold on, I need to make a little better ring. Hold on. Okay. All right. I'm moving it all over. So, so, I have a couple different butcher paper activities you can do for a clothing bean. So, this one goes with Pete the Cat. And it's all I did was I cut a giant shirt from butcher paper, and then you are just going to put out a bunch of dot markers, and then you have some options for this. So, excuse me, you can put out a color dice so they can roll the dice, and I would have all of these open um, too if you're using the color dice, otherwise, it's gonna take them longer to open and close than it would be to do the game. So they would get like red and they could do one red. And they roll again. Yellow, and they would get the yellow and do one yellow. This color dice is really good for developing one-to-one -one correspondence. So they're not, so they're just adding one time. Um, and it's really good for self-regulation too because it's really hard to just do one. You wanna do like a bunch. Um, so you could do a color dice. You could also do, um, a dot dice with just numbers one, two, three on them. I made these with a cube, it doesn't go any higher. If you're working on practicing identifying numbers, you can also make a numeral dice that just has one, two, three. My um, wooden dice just go to three. And then if you wanna use dot dice, they go to six, they roll the dice, dot that many, roll the dice, dot that many. So you pick what level you, I guess that goes like that way, right? <laughs> you pick what level you want to do this with. You could also make this giant shirt and use a dice that has um, different types of lines on it. So they roll the dice and then they would draw that type of line on the shirt. So if it they roll the dice and they drew a zigzag, they would write a zigzag all the way across. So you could be practice writing different types of lines. They rolled the dice and they did uh, bumps. They could do bumps all the way across. So that would be really fun. It'd be really fun if you had like a shirt and a pair of pants and they could um, make the shirt and the pants all either with types of lines or with dots. It'd be really fun. And how fun would that be to hang in the hallway with a little sign that says, this is how we learn. We learn through play. We roll the dice and put that many on or we're practicing making different types of lines for, um, so we're ready to write letters and put a little sign, put it in the hallway. And now you have a great activity that you did as a classroom. So these are some of the butcher paper activities that I make and I use over and over again. This one is literally covered in shapes. And guess what I'm gonna put out? Shape buttons. And all they're gonna do, I grabbed the one shape that I can't see. <laughs> they're just going to match them. Now, if you if you have it like a, oh, I have a star, I don't see a star, and they can maybe put it in a different bucket or don't put those out, up to you. Um, circle, that's not a circle, that's a square. Triangle, they can just literally just match them. And if you don't um, have shape buttons, they just grab some on Amazon and they're really, really fun. Or they can also match, um, if you just have buttons that are like this color, you can just have them also match just the colors too. And they could say um, diamond or rhombus, whatever your school calls it. And then they could say circle and they can match it. Triangle. Oh, oh, that's a shape one. Oval. And they could just match the color. Again, use what you have available to you in, um, in your classroom. So there's that idea. This is a giant sheet of paper that I made a whole bunch of different types of lines on. 
All you're going to do is put out the buttons and students are going to make the different type of lines with the buttons. So if your students need to work on fine motor and making types of lines, this one or the shirt. If they need to work on counting, do the roll the dice, put that many on. If they need to work on shapes, have them match the shapes. And if they need to work on letters, that's it. And again, once make a set of butcher paper that you can use for a whole bunch of different themes. And then you don't have to always like be remaking everything, especially if you're running later in the morning or a parent was talking to you or admin or, you know, all the things that can happen in the morning. Or it snowed, I'm in Missouri. And sometimes it you wake up and there is snow and there wasn't supposed to be or there's supposed to be and then there wasn't, you know. So again, take the buttons that you have you can also use the shape buttons if you have them, and students can make all of the different letters with the buttons. And again, I, I'm, last time I showed you guys this, I think I used, um, we made the letters with dog bones. But again, make it with whatever manipulative you have. If you have buttons, do buttons. If you have the big buttons, use the big buttons. Use whatever works, and again, whatever you have on your hand, on hand, and Pick the skill that your students need to work on. Um, and it, people always ask me to sell lesson plans. And this is one reason why I don't sell lesson plans. It's because your lesson plans need, one, they should be different every year. Obviously, they're not going to be like super, super different. But you shouldn't do the same table time as you did last year because this group of kiddos are going to be a little bit different. And they're going to need to work on a little bit of different skills. So maybe this year you're going to do the shape match with the buttons. Whereas last year your students had shapes down really well and they needed to practice um, that one-to-one -one correspondence. So maybe you're, this year you're doing the roll the dice and dot that many. Um, so you pick what your students need to work on. So more buttons. So in the fine, or in the um, Math and Literacy Center's pack, I have these button shape cards because students need to also be writing them. So they can trace it with the marker. They could also make it with Play-Doh or you could put out like the actual buttons and they could make it with the buttons or make it with Play-Doh. And then they can trace it with a dry erase marker and just erase, erase, erase. And you can work on all of your shapes that way. But they're just like the shape and buttons, just like you have in your classroom. And again, we're just going to keep going with the button theme. So this one, we are going to make patterns with the button. So grab your buttons back. And students are going to extend the pattern. So you pick. Oh, sorry. We have two levels for this one. I forgot. So they can either copy the pattern. So they're just going to put the buttons directly on top of, and they're gonna copy it, and then they can extend it. And then I do have some blank ones in here somewhere. Can't find them, of course. There are blank ones, so that way students could make their own patterns as well, because that's the, the levels of development, right? First they copy, and then they extend, and then they're able to create their own. So, can make patterns, and again, these are in my clothing math and literacy centers set. And then this is the last activity I have to show you guys. Oh, and then I'm gonna tell you about blocks. Okay, so all kids, I wouldn't say all, most kids like to design things, right? Whether they like to design, I forgot to erase this last time, so let me get this off of here. Um, most students like to design and make different things. So why not use it to your advantage, use the things they love to sneak in some math. So students can either count or add. <laughs> they can count or add. And what they're going to do is they're going to design their shirt or there's a pair of pants. And then what they do is they pick the card. So they pick however many dots or maybe they want to do stripes or maybe they want to put stars so I'm not gonna do a big number but maybe oh that was my mixed up but <laughs> maybe they're gonna do three dots and two lines now you're like I don't have lines just cut up pipe cleaners it's 
So we, or stripes. So we got two stripes and then they want three dots or, or spots, sorry. One, two, three. One, two, three. So maybe they want them around the collar. So then we have three and two and now we're, they're counting. But maybe your students have, <laughs> have great one-on-one -on -one correspondence and they're ready to work on addition. No worries. And both of these mats come counting or um, addition. So, so maybe now they're gonna do three. We get three spots. One, two, three. And then maybe they want two stripes. Maybe they want the stripes going down. So three plus two, one, two, three, four, five. And then they can write it with a dry erase marker. And now we're practicing addition. And again, maybe you have some kiddos who are doing counting, some kiddos who are using the addition maps um, up to you. But again, stripes are just cut up pipe cleaners. Super, super simple. And for stars, I just have these little star mini erasers. You can also use star beads. If you don't have stars, don't use those cards. Okay, you, you make, again, use what you have. If you don't have something, no worries. Um, in a lot of my math and literacy center sets, I usually um, put a lot of different options on different things you can use. So I like say, if for the stripes, you can use like pipe cleaners, you can cut up pieces of felt, whatever you wanna do. Oh, there's one more, where's that? Hold on, I have one more activity, but I forgot. Let me find it, okay. I can't believe I almost forgot to show this one to you. Okay, so a lot of people have quilts at their house, right? And quilts are a type of fabric. A lot of people have patchwork. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take some fabric that you have. You can buy some off Amazon. Some of this I bought off Amazon. Some of this I had like in the craft closet. This is actually a towel from the Dollar Tree. So you can go to the Dollar Tree and buy like three towels and it's fabric, so it works just the same. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut it into squares and then take this square and you can cut it into a rectangle and then you can cut it into four squares and then you cut those four squares into triangles or obviously you can do like kind of a combination of them. What you're gonna do is it's kind of like a giant quilt or patchwork, but what they're gonna do um, is it's, it's like a big puzzle. It's like a pattern, a fabric pattern puzzle. And that's why I have it laying flat in the baggie with this um, card. So that way the, um, the fabric doesn't get all, all kind of clumped together and messed up. So they can use the squares and make a design and kind of put it together like a puzzle. Maybe they want, oh, that one is too big. It doesn't fit. So maybe they're going to have to move these because maybe they want this down there. And then maybe they want the two triangles over here. And if you're, um, I don't have it on here, but on the paper, you can cut it to the same size as your squares. And then it's like a great big fabric puzzle quilt or patchwork um, quilt. And there's that one book that goes really well with this. And I forgot the name of it off the top of my head. But Again, use whatever you have, whatever fabric you have. Maybe you have an old shirt that you don't like. Instead of donating it, you can cut it up and use it for this activity or just go buy like two or three tea towels or four maybe, like buy, probably buy four tea towels from like the Dollar Tree and you can cut them up and make all the different um, designs. But look, if you switch one, then you can fill it in different. And you can have them do it together. It's like a partner group. So you want it folds over. Oh, um, a little trick too is if your fabric does that, um, use your straightener like an iron and then you'll have it nice and flat again. Let's just bring your straightener to school if you have a straightener. <laughs> I, that's what I did. Um, so yeah, so get a little patchwork, spatial reasoning puzzle made out of um, clothing or fabric. And again, use towels, maybe some shirts you don't want anymore, whatever you want to do. And then I didn't forget about the block center. So for the block center, you can do community helpers because all of the community helpers wear different clothes to, because different jobs, you need to wear different clothes. So you can do community helpers. They can build different places in the community. Um, 
And you can also put fabric in the block center and they can kind of drape it um, to make different roofs and the floors and the grass and all the different things. So you could put like just solid color fabric in there. You could use um, different, I wouldn't do big pieces. I would probably do them maybe the size of like this paper or like double this size. Um, so that way they can make different things with the fabric and they can build places in the community um, based on what they want to build that day. And again, those real photos help them um, make more detailed plans and make more detailed buildings as they're building and as they're selecting the materials off the shelf because now they, it's more purposeful, right? They have an image of what they want or maybe they see the image and the photo of what they're trying to build and then they're like, oh yeah, I didn't, I don't have a window or oh yeah, I wanted to add a sidewalk. Like it's just kind of like, just kind of extends their thinking and it takes their building um, and to, to the next level in the block center. So I'm just gonna look one more time. Okay, yep. I think that is it. So make sure, like I said, you go grab the geo board, um, the geo board clothing freebie, and then all these ideas are on the blog. The link is where the links are, and then the book list is on the blog too. So, and if you want all the printables that I showed you, they're in the clothing math and literacy center set or unit, and there's a ton more that's in there that I didn't even have time to show you guys. So. I hope you guys loved it. Make yourself a set of clothing um, or clothespin manipulatives. Grab some buttons and have a ton of fun with your clothing theme in your classroom. And if you do some of these ideas, make sure you um, tag me when you share it on social media because I'd love to see what you guys are doing in your classrooms. You know what I love even more is when you take one of my ideas and you kind of like twist it and then make it even better. <laughs> like Because your students maybe were like, oh, I want to do it this way. And then they took my idea and, or maybe your brain took my idea and they, you guys take it to the next level. And it's just really neat to see, um, how you do it in your classrooms. So, yeah. So you guys have a great night and I will see you next time. Talk to you soon. Bye.